All right, so I want to talk about neutral game. I wanted to kind of talk about my theory of neutral game. And, you know, this is kind of a thing that pertains to a lot of different fighting games. Macho Ball and Fundamentals for those that want to become good at Guilty Gear. And this was something that was making the rounds a while ago. Now, there's a lot of stuff in this guide that is pertinent mostly to Guilty Gear. But I think this segment is really, really enlightening. And I actually independently came up with this concept in like 2014 or 2015 when I used to think about Smash a lot and I was thinking about how to get better. This was like when I was like top 100 and stuff like that. And I was talking to Laudandis. I said to him, hey man, I have come to a realization that the neutral game in Melee and probably in Smash in general is basically able to be distilled to this kind of rock, paper, scissors interaction. Every interaction in the neutral game can kind of be represented by one of three options in a rock, paper, scissors kind of format. Modulo calls it the three structure, I call it the neutral triangle. And this is even a, a term that I've seen kind of tossed around since then. But the neutral triangle, basically, I think of it as the first thing that you might do in neutral is okiwaza. Oki means to put something somewhere. Waza means a move, just a move, right? Like like a move that you put. So that's throwing out hitboxes. So okiwaza, we're talking about the fox throw, that might be like doing a retreating drill, retreating nair, retreating back air. Throwing a move out that's relatively safe, such that if your opponent tries to run in, they're going to get hit. If they don't try to run in, no big deal. Ate Waza means literally just trying to hit your opponent. Waza again means move. Ate is like you're trying to hit them. So this is like in Guilty Gear, this might be you dash or you do your 2k or something. Dash it. They're going to be standing there. They're expecting me. Uh, they're like waiting for me to throw a move out to whiff punish me or something. I'm going to run all the way in and I'm going to hit them. In melee, this often looks like something like a running shine. You might run in and overshoot a nair. You might run in and you might uh, boost grab if you're a character like Sheik. And then there's Sashikaishi, which means waiting for the opponent to make a move and reacting to it. So you all know, you all know what this means. You're dash dancing, Marth is dash dancing, Fox is dash dancing the ditto. You're looking for that whiff punish. You're trying to see them throw out a move and then you're gonna grab them, right? You're gonna grab them or you might even do dash dance up smash if you're in the Fox ditto. Dash dance, dash attack. Sheik might do dash attack here, right? So this is, like in Guilty Gear, <clears throat> this is like, da what FD break basically means, you can think of FD break almost like a wave dash down. Uh, imagine like, you're like spacing them out, and you like dash in and make it look like you're going for one of these, and then you like stop real quick, wait for them to throw out a move to catch you coming in, the Okiwaza, and then you're gonna punish them. So that would be how this happens in Guilty Gear. What, what this looks like a lot of the time in Melee is you dash to that spacing, and you might even make it look like you might be going for like a running shot or something like that, but then you, you know, but you do a dash dance, to try to bait something that they throw out of Okiwaza, and then you can hit them. Maybe it's like Fox Marth or something. And if you're on the Marth, you know this might be dash dancing, waiting for the Fox to, to throw out a nair, and you're trying to you're trying to grab them for the Fox. Maybe you're trying to get the the Marth throws out a move because you backs up all the way to the corner, and he does like fair, and then maybe you you know you sit at that spacing, wait for him to throw out an up tilt, <clears throat> and then boom, you're gonna punch the up tilt, something like that, right? And basically it turns out that this, this, and this comprise like 90% plus of neutral game interactions in Melee. Now there's some, obviously there's some matchups that it, it, it's like, it's a little bit less crystal clear. Like maybe the Puff Ditto might be an example where, you know, you're not really like going all the way in. There's a lot of this in the Puff Ditto. But see, even in the Puff Ditto, it's just, I mean, the neutral triangle is still there. It's just lopsided. It just looks different. It's represented with different moves, right? Um, and like, certain characters might not have a very good Ate Waza, but they might have a really good Oki Waza. And to kind of simplify this, instead of using these Japanese terms, because you guys probably don't, you know, know as much Japanese. So in English, you can basically think of it as this way, right? Oki Waza, I call it playing preemptively. So this is doing a preemptive move. Preempting is in trying to preempt your opponent from coming in. Ate Waza, I would say is playing proactively. So classic Fox, option would be running shine you can run in all the way and shine you don't even short hop so they have nothing to react to and you're gonna running shine and you're gonna catch them dashing back they're trying to react to a move that you throw out but you're going all the way in you're hitting the back of their dash dance and you're making it so that they can't even uh they can't even whiff punish you and then sashi kaishi classic dash dance grab like this is basically what this looks like in melee i call this playing reactively so you got preemptive you got proactive and you got reactive and basically 90% plus of, of ground game interactions are one of these uh, ground game and even some air game is is, is basically this. Walk around Goroshi is, yeah, it's definitely, walk around means you don't know and Goroshi means kill. So it's like killing someone with something you don't know. But yeah, basically it just means cheese. But mind you, there's a difference between what people will call cheese when they're salty versus actual cheese. And as the cheeser, it is your duty to know if you're really relying on cheese. Like... Fiction calls Axe cheese. It is Axe's job as a player 
to parse that and be like, okay, am I actually relying on cheese or is my opponent just salty? Like, am I actually relying on a gimmick that if my opponent understood what was going on would stop working and therefore I should learn something else? Or is the technique I'm using actually viable and I should keep doing it and the fact that my opponent calls it cheese is just them being salty? Off yeah, often it is the latter. Often it is the latter. And it's also pertinent to the level of play, right? Like, a lot of the time at low level, I don't know, maybe you have a peach that's like, clobbering all the foxes by holding down, like, crouch cancel down smashing or whatever. Well, yeah, that's a technique that, you know, even as a top level peach player, you need to be able to rely on crouch cancel down smash. But it is cheesy in the sense that if you only rely on it, or using foxes down air, for example, right? Using drill, which beats crouch cancel, then yeah, it's gonna stop working. So it's kind of cheese. It, you know, this there's some nuance here, right? It's not just, it's not super straightforward in terms of like, Oh, if you're, if you're stomping noobs with some strategy, you know, you better stop doing it because it's not going to work at a higher level. Well, it might work. It might just work some of the time. Could do a whole talk on cheese. I could do a whole talk on cheese. Is this cheese? We should pull up, like, I'll just, like, pull up a bunch of clips and, like, is this cheese? And talk about if it's cheesy or not. And try to, we'll try to, we'll try to come out of the stream with a well-defined definition of what cheese really means. Any advice on not getting angry at video game? You know, I thought about this the other day, and there's a great quote by i'm gonna have to find it because it was a dobra tweet if you're like playing and you're getting upset because you think you should be winning while you're playing just assume you're the worst player in the whole world because if you're the worst player in the world you won't get salty because if you're the worst player in the world like everyone you play is better than you right and, and it's your job to learn and adapt and grow right so he was basically saying can you imagine you just go into every session thinking i'm the worst player in the world and i just want to get better and if you Kind of adopt that mentality, you know, even if you're someone as good as Dogra, who's obviously a top, top, top level fighting gamer, it will be a, a lot harder to tilt. I think the thing that leads to tilt is like expectations, which is why lag makes us upset. You got to clear your expectations. I think that's what it is. Like the reason lag is upsetting is because you expect when you push the button for the thing to happen. You don't expect for the, you push the button and then there's this lag spike and the input gets dropped. Or... It's usually expectations that, uh, that tilt people. So if you can clear your expectations, Dogra is basically saying, if you just assume you're the worst player in the world, don't have any ego about your matches, you're not gonna get as upset. I always notice that when I'm picking up something new, like a new game, I don't get salty for like the first little while while I'm really bad. And then as soon as I start getting salty, it means that I've gotten to like some like moderate skill level or whatever. And and then I have to like kind of catch myself, you know, and kind of recalibrate. So, um, like with Grand Blue Versus, for example, like I didn't start getting salty until I hit like S or SS rank, I think. Because before that, it's like, you know, or at least, or at least like once you know your combos. But then you get to a certain point, and you're like, oh shit, like I should be beating these people. I'm so much better than these people. This sucks. Nah, this lag like is making my. I'm dropping my combo that I know how to do. You know, if you don't know, if you don't know anything, you're not gonna get upset, right? So if you can somehow maintain that beginner's mind, oh I'm not saying I'm the best at it, but I, I really, when when I read Dogra saying that, I was like, damn, that's actually really powerful. I'm gonna try, try working on that or whatever. What is a sick neutral game to you, and who has one? Hey, good question. Let's go back to that. The reality is that most top players have a sick neutral game. Someone's neutral being quote unquote sick, to me what that probably means, if someone was, was using that word, to me that probably means they're using a lot of different options and they're finding creative ways to beat. Obviously, like if, if, I, if I'm going up against a Marth that's dash dancing, there's, there's multiple ways to beat that. One might be, I might run forward, short hop to make it look like I'm trying to hit them. Oh shit, I'm throwing out a move, they can whiff punish it. And then I wave dash back or wave land back, and then I try to punish, you know, so I, and then I try to bait them out, and then I whip punish them. Right? That's one thing I could do. Or I could overshoot all the way, and I could do a running shine. Or I could do an undershoot aerial, and then an overshoot. That's the classic Mango. Mango loves to do undershoot and then overshoot. So he'll like do like a retreating downer, or he'll like short up forward with a downer, but then pull back so that if they try to grab him, they'll whiff. And then he'll do a downer where he goes all the way in or something like that. So I would say that if someone is calling someone lame in terms of their neutral, what that probably means to me is they're picking the same kind of high reward high expected value tools and they're not mixing it up too much but it's working for them that's what i think people usually mean when they say lame if they're saying this guy plays lame people used to rag on west balls for basically kind of relying on mostly up tilt and like auto cancel back air and like full jump that's why you know s fat used to always say for example s i was like yeah west balls looks really aggressive and flashy but really what's going on is he's actually really defensive and that's what's going on with him um, but yeah, coming back to this neutral triangle, the crux of it is you got an RPS going on. If someone's move spamming, if we're going to talk about the Fox Ditto, if someone's spamming moves, the Okiwaza, if someone's spamming moves preemptively, they're throwing a lot of moves out, 
how do you punish that? You get to a spacing where you can whiff punish them, and then you whiff punish. So you dash dance, and if you dash dance at the right spacing and they throw out a backer, like a retreating backer, you can run in and grab them, right? Well, how do you beat someone that's just looking to react and grab you? You can run in and overshoot. So if I'm if I'm playing a fox sitter, my opponent's just dash dancing, trying to look for me to throw out a move that they can, they can whiff punish me, I'm going to run in and I'm going to overshoot. I'm going to hit them at the back of their dash dance. I could also run in a nair. I could do a nair that, that hits the back of their dash dance. I'm not going to let them. I'm basically going to do an attack that will hit someone on where they're set up to react to me, right? And then the way you beat that, if someone's running in, if I'm playing an opponent that's trying to bully their way in, if it's a Fox Dodo, again, that's a very good analogy here. If they're uh, if they're trying to run in with a running shine, I can just throw out a move in place, right? Like, I can literally just stand there. If I know my opponent's just doing running shine all day, how do I beat running shine? Just stand in place and do drills. If they try to run in and do a running shine, and I just stand in place and do a drill, I get to grab it. I might kill them off of it. Let's talk about, like, where people start to struggle in some of these matchups. I think a common one is that in Melee, there is a way to kind of mask your preemptive play and turn it into, like... Well, here's a really good example. Take something like a character like Marth. Okay, well, one of Marth's greatest strengths is that when he throws out an arrow like a forward air or a neutral air, he can dash back. And so even though he's throwing out a move uh, with, with, uh, with you know, Oki, even though he's using Okiwa as a preemptive play, if you try to whiff punish him, a lot of the time the whiff punish itself is very difficult to execute. So Marth throws out a fair, but then he's immediately going to dash back. And if you're playing a character where you're seeking to like dash dance grab that Marth on his landing, turns out a lot of the time Marth can dash back and make it so it's very, very, you can't actually like raw, get a raw punish on the forward. He can either dash back or if he's really smart, he'll mix and dash forward sometimes. And what you end up seeing a lot in the, in the, in the Fox versus Marth matchup, which is a very common example is Fox won't actually try to punish the forward air directly. When Marth throws out a forward air preemptively, what you'll see from the Fox player or like whoever he's fighting is they'll continue to dash to see if the Marth dashes back or forward and then try to punish that option. So you're basically not punishing the forward air directly. You're punishing the next thing they do. So if there's a Marth that does forward air in place and then dashes back and you try to grab where he's landing, you're trying to whip punish it with a grab, it'll whiff. So you might wait a little bit and then you might run further and then do a running shine or something like that. But at that point, you're not really using reactive play to punish the the preemptive option anymore. What you're really doing is you're kind of making a read on the next thing they're doing or you're trying to react to the next thing they're doing and then you're actually trying to proactively bully your way in there. So what does this basically mean? It's that certain characters have very, very strong versions of some of these tools. I think Marth has really, really, really good preemptive play. I think Sheik is pretty good at this too. Characters like Sheik and Peach, you can do lagless aerials like Peach has her float cancel forward air, which is not really a move that you can dash dance grab. Peach has a really, really fast jab where she's going to be able to jet. Like you see, you've probably seen Peaches do a lot of time. They'll be floating. They'll come down with the forward air, right? Where they hit you with their crown. And if the forward air whiffs, it's like, oh, they're going to try to run in and grab my landing. They just do jabs in place. Jab, jab. Or forward air down smash sometimes is an option. So a lot of the time, you know, you're thinking, oh, well, I should be able to dash dance grab their forward air. Well, you really can't because it's got so little lag and there's got there's such a small window. Sometimes you just have to respect it. And, you know, a common tool in the Fox matchup might be if you see them landing with the forward air, you might go and full jump over them as Fox. And then if they do that forward air, well, what can they do after that? They, the jab isn't going to stop you from drilling them because you're on top of them at this point. Uh, down smash isn't going to stop you from drilling them. So you can do a downer, and their best option is either try to dash back out of there or maybe smash the out, or just, like, shield. But yeah, it's I'd say that, like, the two ways to get better at neutral are basically, like, understand where you're at on this spectrum of rock, paper, scissors, right? Like, what am I actually losing to? What is the tool that I'm losing to, and where does it fall in this triangle? Because basically everything is in this triangle. And then from there, it's like, okay... Should I try to beat that option with the thing that beats it? Like, should, like if they're throwing out a move preemptively that I that I keep running into, can I actually whiff punish it? Or if I can't whiff punish it because the frame date on it's too good, can I at least set up a better position and then kind of play the neutral triangle on the next option that they're likely to do after that? If they're smacking the whole triangle, that means you're getting conditioned. And you just need to end. I mean, that's good. That's where you want to be at. That means they're mixing you up and you're actually, but if you're playing the mix-ups properly, if they're, if they're actually having to, if they're having to use the whole triangle to beat you, that means they actually, that means you're not losing the same option over and over and over. 
you're not getting conditions like oh i mean it's a, it's a much worse feeling when you're losing to one option over and over and you don't know what the answer is if they're having to rotate across the entire neutral triangle that basically means that you're probably doing a good job of responding to their options so, like when you watch you know a significantly high level set against a peach player uh you know yeah the peach can throw out down smashers or the peach can do float aerials but they can't always do the exact same thing you've got to mix in dash deck sometimes right you've got to mix in you know land with your float and then just float again like jump and float again like you can't get super predictable because even if peach's options are very high reward well they're gonna end up getting uh with punish adventure right if like the peach keeps throwing out down smashes you know Again, yeah, melee is a complicated game. So is Guiltier. I mean, if you look at this guy that uh, that Machbo talks about all these different options, a lot of what he talks about is like anti airs, which are basically like you know, if your opponent is approaching you because air dashing is a really strong tool in Guilty Gear. He's basically saying like you got to know how to even catch them coming in the first place. This is basically just know your character. In melee, this is basically know your know your tools in neutral. Know your tools in neutral. He emphasizes anti air because in a game like Guilty Gear where there's air dashing. When, when people approach, it's in the air. Well, in melee, when people usually approach, it's kind of more on the ground. There, obviously, there's no air dashing in melee. And something he really emph emphasizes is... Yeah, sometimes you cannot do your go-to anti-reaction on reaction against him. Sometimes you can't... Like, it's like with, me with melee, in terms of running shine. Let's talk about Fox Marth. Marth can't actually react to running shine. If Fox is running for... Unless you're, like, sta if you're starting from, like, across the screen, you're running all the way and you're shining... He's still not really reacting to it because, like, at the end of the day, he's making a read that you're going to go all the way in. You could always wave dash back. You could always short off forward and wave line back. You could be doing a bait. So, ultimately, he has to make a read at a certain point, and he's got to throw something out. A lot of the time, like, the Mewtwo King is he'll do a dash dance grab in place, just expecting you to run in, even though you haven't done... Even though you haven't actually short off, you're not actually showing that you're going to do an aerial. He'll just do a dash... He'll just, like, dash dance, and he'll do a grab, expecting you to run in. So, sometimes, yeah, you must do Okiwaza's entire. Sometimes you've actually got to preemptively throw out your, your tool that stops them from running in. Yeah, you got to know, this is something Drug Fox talks about a lot. If, you're, if you've watched any of Drug Fox's lessons, he always talks about, like, you got to know what's reactable in these video games. You got to know what you can react to and what you have to read. And if you're losing to a Marth that just grabs you, you're trying to running shine, and he's, like, he's grabbing you when you're running in, you're, like, running in, and he's, like, just grabbing you out of your run... That's not on reaction. You're getting red. That means you're being predictable. You gotta know what... The, there's two reasons you gotta know what's reactable. The first reason is because you need to know for yourself, can I punish this thing my opponent's doing on reaction, or do I have to make a read? The second reason is because then you know for your own tools, if you're getting punished, you know that the opponent's making a read. So when Mewtwo King does this thing where he just grabs someone out of the run, that's a read. And if that happens to you... What it should tell you is, ah, shit, I'm conditioned a certain way. I gotta start baiting him. The next time I run in, he's gonna expect it, possibly. And if I wave dash back in a certain spacing, he's gonna throw out a grab and I'm gonna be able to punish that. Yeah, in, in uh, a lot of the case, it's super duper duper important to know what's reactable and what's not. Because you gotta know, can I keep doing what I'm doing but just react better and it'll work? Or do I need to actually start making some reads here or prevent my opponent from making some reads? Or start doing certain options to condition them a certain way? Look upwards. What does he mean by look upwards? So this is another another important fighting game concept that actually, the more I play traditional fighters, the more I realize applies to melee very strongly. People in fighting games say look upwards. What look upwards means is basically get ready to anti-air. A lot of the time in fighting games, if the opponent jumps at you, they're expecting you to throw a fireball. And you do have sure you can. You're going to hit them out of the air and you're going get to get, get the knockdown. But how many times have you watched Street Fighter matches and someone jumps in and they don't get anti-air? Well, turns out that happens a lot and it's because you're not looking for that specific option. And this kind of thing happens in Melee too. A lot of the time people will do things that are obviously punishable and you won't actually see a punish. And that is basically because they weren't anticipating that option. They were anticipating something else. There was one matchup in particular when I was playing a lot of net players and what I noticed playing a lot of Marth players, actually, this is kind of every, like, you know people complain about like net play Falco, net play Marth, net play Fox, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of like net play characters, right? Like people play the same flowchart or whatever. If you want to like have an easy time against those players, learn what they're actually looking for and just do anything else. So a good example, again, coming back to this is Marth. When I play net play Marths, a lot of the time they're just only looking to whip punish. They start dash dancing every time, every now and then they'll throw out a forward air, but the forward air is always going to be followed by a dash back. And you know that at the end of the day, they're looking to dash back. They're looking to basically whip punish you doing an aerial or something like that. They're trying to get their grab, and they're going to try to kill you off the grab. And that's basically what they're looking for, like, 90% plus of the time in neutral. So what do you do 
Well, yeah, you can beat them directly, right? You can beat them directly and say, hey, I'm just going to run and shine all day. And until you adapt, my option in neutral is going to be your option. I'm going to keep throwing rock until you realize you need to throw paper, right? That's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do is literally anything else. You can do anything else that doesn't give them exactly what they're looking for. So you could do wave lands back. You could jump on the platform above them and like operate in a spacing where they think, oh shit, like maybe I got to go for a forwarder or something. Maybe they go for a rising forwarder and then you can bait that out and punish it. If they're dash dancing and looking for a dash dance grab, they're not going to be ready to punish anything else you do. And I'm sure you guys have been there too. I think this is very common with mid-level players, even high-level players to a certain degree, where you're dash dancing and there isn't really a meaning to your dash dance. You're not really doing it with any meaningfulness. It's really just, you're kind of just dash dancing. Even... Zane even talked about this, that he used to do this up until, even uh, even up until 2018. He was saying, like, a lot of the time I would be dash dancing, just kind of dash dancing. When we had him on the Scar and Tove show, I thought it was very funny he said that, because I was thinking, wow, well, when I watch Zane, I think Zane is someone whose dash dance always looks very meaningful. But he was saying that with him, a lot of the time when he was getting good, he was just kind of dash dancing in the corners, just kind of hoping they come in. So it's kind of funny that even someone at the absolute highest level of play still feels this. Yeah, you know, you felt this. Sometimes you're just dash dancing, just doing it. And then someone does a move that you could probably whip punish and you're like not actually ready to react to it? That happens all the time. And I think with like, oh, this th these net play marks keep doing the same option over and over. All you really gotta do is like, look, look at the screen, look and see what they're actually like not, what are they not actually ready to even cover? What options are they literally not ready to cover? And how do I exploit the fact that I kind of know what they're looking for? Once you know a Martha's only looking to whip punish, it's so easy to exploit that. Short hop forward, wave land back, they're always gonna they're gonna slam that grab. They're gonna slam that grab. You get a free punish. Short hop forward, hold back, undershoot a grab at a spacing where they can't actually punish you. And you're gonna bait on an aerial. There's so many ways to bait somebody out. And the best part about not always just using like, okay, yeah, they're only looking to whip punish. Cool, I'm just gonna running shine them all day. The thing is, if you do this too much, you're you're telling them, you're actually telling them, hey, I know what you're trying to do, and if I just keep running shining a Marth that's keep and he's dash dancing back over and over and over, if he's smart, eventually he's gonna start doing this. Well, if I throw some baits in there, if I do some wave dashes back, wave land back, undershoot, wave land on the platform, if I if I mix it up, I don't just do the, the raw thing in the neutral triangle that beats the thing he's doing. If I just if I do some Okiwaza but spaced, you know, some preemptive moves but spaced, if I do some tricky movement, the thing is right, mango fade back to air, exactly. The thing is you're still not giving him what he wants, but you're doing it in a much more ambiguous way. And so the Marth isn't going to start like adapting the same way he might if you're just running shine him over and over and over. So it basically adds a layer of like confusion on top of the conditioning where you're like, okay, I'm not going to play into the thing you want, but I'm going to pick a whole bunch of options that you can't beat. The reason, you know, you watch these high level matches, the reason it doesn't look like three people picking their best preemptive tool, their best proactive tool, and their best... Uh, reactive tool and just doing you know cycling between those three forever is because they add layers of doing things that don't outright be what the opponent's doing but are safe based on what they know about what the opponent's looking for to further confuse the opponent to basically stay one step ahead in the conditioning so yeah that's basically the talk this is gonna be on youtube uh if you guys aren't following the youtube youtube.com slash tove i think it comes up tove bbq uh yeah i don't have too many videos on here yet but there will be i've basically kind of just been focusing on um streaming i haven't really focused on youtube at all but yeah, I hope this helps some of you guys out. Even if it doesn't directly help you out, I feel like it's just interesting. I feel like thinking about it and talking about it in terms that are rigorous and well-defined, I think is just like, pe people hand wave this kind of stuff a lot, you know? People don't really talk about it in terms that are uh, crystallized or concrete, right? People don't try to define things clearly in esports. That is true.